The vast majority of all planets we know of orbit stars. There are potentially around 400 billion stars in the Milky Way, and if each star hosts multiple planets, then there's likely upwards of a trillion star-bound planets in this galaxy. However, there's one type of object that probably outnumbers the amount of stars in the Milky Way, and even potentially the number of planets bound to stars, and by a lot. Rogue planets. You've probably heard of rogue planets before. Essentially, they're planets without stars, free-floating through the galaxy, or even in intergalactic space. At first glance, you'd probably consider most rogue planets to be similar to one another. Unlike planets around stars, they don't have a source of heat or light, so they're probably all cold, dark, and dead. Gas giant, ice giant, or rocky planet doesn't matter. They're all just lonely, lifeless worlds floating through the void. But this is not accurate. Just like planets around stars, there's a huge variety of environments rogue planets can have. They can be hot as well as cold, and have nearly the diversity of planets around stars. This video will be an exploration of some of the most interesting rogue planets we've ever discovered. Because I usually only research planets orbiting stars, this will be my first collab on this channel. A few types of rogue planets will be covered by Trology, a fellow astronomy channel that's extremely underrated. The link to their channel will be in the pinned comment, and you'll hear him talk about a few interesting rogue planets later in the video. Anyways, before talking about specific rogue planets, we have to talk about how they form. I'm sure many of you have heard this before. There are two main ways rogue planets can form. They either form like stars do, but without enough material to become stars, or they get ejected from their star systems. So far, we know a lot more about the first option. We've found a tons of rogue planets that were likely never part of star systems. Most of these are large, hot gas giants. However, it's unclear if these should be called planets or not. The definition of planet is complicated. For an object to be a planet, it doesn't just need to be planet-sized, it also depends on how it formed. Planets that form the way stars and brown dwarfs form are usually not considered to be planets. Rather, the ones we know of are often referred to as sub-brown dwarfs. A sub-brown dwarf is, essentially, an object the size of a planet that formed like a star. But there isn't really consensus for what to call sub-brown dwarfs that orbit stars. Luckily, we can avoid that debate because we aren't talking about planets orbiting stars, so we'll move on. And that brings us to the first rogue planet of this video, WISE 0855-0714. Keep in mind that in reality, this planet is completely dark, but I'm depicting it as fully illuminated just to make it easier to see. It's not this bright in real life. WISE 0855-0714 is the closest sub brown dwarf and rogue planet to Earth. At least, it is for now, because more will probably be discovered closer to us at some point. It's about 7.4 light years away from us, which makes it the fourth closest system to us, after Alpha Centauri, Barnard Star, and Lumen 16. Its mass is not well known, but it's between 3 and 10 Jupiter masses. It has a temperature of about 11 degrees Celsius, or 51 degrees Fahrenheit. You might notice something there. WISE 0855-0714 doesn't have a star. It's light years away from any source of heat or light. So why does it have a temperature similar to Earth? because objects of this size are large enough to generate their own internal heat. We see this with many other sub brown dwarfs across the galaxy, like the star-bound planets Aura or Coconuts 2b, which have temperatures hotter than Earth despite being several thousand AU away from their stars. Despite being the coldest known sub brown dwarf, this object is just bright enough and close enough to us that we can directly image it. The real pictures of this object are being shown on screen now. This is how we discovered WISE 0855-0714, direct imaging. It's just barely bright enough for our telescopes to see it, and far away from any star that its dim light can be seen without the glare of brighter objects getting in the way. This is especially useful for detecting the largest of the rogue planets. Small, rocky planets are impossible to detect with direct imaging telescopes right now, because they simply don't emit any detectable light. However, the large, several Jupiter-mass planets are. As well as this, young planets tend to be hotter, as they haven't had time to cool down from their formation. The youngest planets, even if they're rogue, have temperatures in the thousands of degrees, which makes them glow even in visible light. This makes them especially easy to detect with direct imaging. And that's exactly what happened about a year ago in the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is one of the largest known star-forming regions in the Milky Way, and is so big and bright that in dark skies you can see it without a telescope. There are thousands of stars forming in the Orion Nebula, and thousands of rogue planets as well. When the James Webb Space Telescope was observing this nebula, we were expecting to see some sub-brown dwarfs. But what we weren't expecting were dozens of pairs of Jupiter-sized planets orbiting each other. These are the Jupiter-mass binary objects, or Jumbos, a fairly recent discovery of up to 42 rogue planets in the Orion Nebula. It's likely that some of these are false positives, background stars mistaken for planets, for example. But some of them are likely real planets. 
The jumbos are split into pairs, usually two planets ranging from smaller than Jupiter to brown dwarf sized, in binary orbits around each other. Two of them are triple systems, with potentially three planets orbiting each other. These jumbos can be separated from their partners by hundreds of astronomical units, several times the distance from the Sun to Pluto. But because there are no stars or other large objects in the area to disturb them, these large orbits are stable. These jumbos are extremely young, likely only a few million years old. Because of this, they have temperatures in the thousands of degrees, despite being nowhere near a star. Clearly, rogue planets do not have to be just cold, dead worlds. These jumbos are hotter than any planet in the solar system, and rival hot Jupiters like Domitium or Tylos in temperature. However, we really have no idea how these places came to be. One or two Jupiter-sized planets orbiting each other with no star in sight would have been interesting, but clearly a statistical anomaly. But 42 of them, that's too many to be a coincidence. Though keep in mind that the majority of jumbos are still unconfirmed. So far, only Jumbo 29 can be reliably assumed to be a true pair of binary planets. However, with 42 candidates, even if the majority are confirmed to not actually be binary planets, this is still strange. Something must be happening in star-forming regions that results in the formation of these objects. Jumbos don't really fit in our current definitions of rogue planet formation. A recent study suggested that they form an entirely separate population from stars, brown dwarfs, and rogue planets, and are their own separate category entirely because of their formation conditions. Also keep in mind that these 42 jumbos are only 9% of James Webb's total rogue planet candidates in the Orion Nebula. In total, James Webb identified 540 rogue planet candidates here, the majority of them being single planet systems, with sizes all the way down to just 60% the mass of Jupiter. Clearly, the population of rogue planets in the Orion Nebula is high. This is, again, expected. Stars take a lot of material to collapse, and some objects just don't get enough of it. With every star that forms in the Orion Nebula, it's possible that several sub-brown dwarfs form. The Orion Nebula isn't unique in this aspect either. In 2021, a group of 170 rogue planet candidates were identified in an association of young stars between the constellations of Ophiuchus and Scorpius. Some of these sub-brown dwarfs are also likely surrounded by large protoplanetary disks, where planets form around them. Just like the definition of sub-brown dwarf is somewhat unclear, it's also up to debate whether to call large objects orbiting these places planets or moons. Personally, I call them planets, but they can also be considered moons depending on whether or not you consider these places true planets or sub-brown dwarfs. One such object is the infamous J1407b. Despite what you may have heard, J1407b is not a super Saturn planet with the largest rings in the universe. This was heavily disputed several years ago. The consensus among the astronomy community at this point is that J1407b is a rogue sub-brown dwarf, not a planet, with a large protoplanetary disk, not a ring system. If this is confirmed, then J1407b is actually a very good example of a small-scale solar system. A small failed star, somewhere between 6 and 20 Jupiter masses, surrounded by a protoplanetary disk where new planets are forming. But anyways, that was my obligatory J1407b mention. If you're new to this channel, I've been trying to combat the misinformation surrounding J1407b specifically for about a year now, and have several videos on that topic. All three of my videos about J1407b not being Super Saturn can be seen on a playlist on my channel. But anyways, all the rogue planets I've mentioned so far have been large, hot gas giants. That's good and all, but these aren't really rogue planets as many imagine them. What about the cold, dark, and lifeless rocks? Where are all they? Well, we know of several of those as well. I'll now hand over this video to Trology, who knows a lot more about small, rocky rogue planets than I do. Once again, the link to his channel will be in the pinned comment, and I highly recommend checking it out. Another way of detecting rogue planets is via gravitational microlensing. First theorized by Einstein in his theory of general relativity, it involves an object passing in front of a source of light, usually a star, bending the space around it and the trajectory of the light coming from said source of light brightening it for a short period of time. Since this lensing object doesn't have to emit any light, we can use this method to detect objects in the galaxy which emit very little or no light, such as neutron stars, black holes, and indeed rogue planets. As of Halloween 2024, up to 16 rogue planets have been detected in this way, many of which are lower mass than even the smallest sub-brown dwarfs, such as several Neptunes and super-Neptunes, and even planets as small as Earth or even smaller. It is these likely rocky and starless worlds which are the most elusive of all to detect, such as the recently discovered MOA 9Y5919L, a Venus-mass barren ice world floating alone through the inner Milky Way. 
almost 20,000 light years away in Sagittarius. Or the potentially even smaller OGLE 2016 BLG1928L. Its discovery having been announced about this time in 2022, which, if located in the galactic disk, would have a mass merely 30% that of Earth, and could be a member of a long-theorized population of Mars-to-Earth-mass protoplanets ejected during early planetary system formation. Note that for these rogue planets, it is simply confirmed that there is no star within a few Einstein radii from these planets, usually translating to several AU. Even if these planets are bound to another object, be it a star, brown dwarf or larger planet, at a larger distance from these rogue planets, they are in any case certainly very cold and dark. Exomoons can also be detected in this method. You could theoretically have a planet and its moon pass in front of a source star, which is one of the possible scenarios to explain the microlanding event of MOA 2015 BLG337. A 9.8 Jupiter mass planet or sub round dwarf orbited by an exomoon with a mass 33.7 times that of Earth. Unfortunately, we haven't found many planets with microlensing yet, but what we have is extremely exciting. We know of rogue planets between the sizes of Earth and Mars, not just sub round dwarfs, and we'll likely find a lot more soon. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is a new space telescope that will go up in 2027. It has one of the largest fields of view of any space telescope, and one of its main objectives is to search the sky for thousands of Earth-sized rogue planets. In the coming years, the number of known rogue planets is probably about to skyrocket. We already know of a few hundred of them, and we're likely to know of thousands with NGRST. The amount of rogue planets in the galaxy is up for debate. Estimates have ranged from one rogue planet for every star, to as many as 40 rogue planets for every star in the Milky Way. There are anywhere from a few hundred billion up to 20 trillion rogue planets in the Milky Way alone. With that many potential worlds waiting to be discovered, I wouldn't be surprised if we find several rogue planets closer to us than WISE 0855-0714. And honestly, I expect there to be rogue planets closer to us than Alpha Centauri. The study of rogue planets is still in its infancy, but we already know a lot, and we are about to know a lot more. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization, and check out Trilogy's channel as well.